All right, everyone, welcome back, Coast to Coast NHL Podcast, episode 45. We are tw- five, seven games away from playoffs for some teams, uh, about 10 for 12 if you're the Vancouver Canucks, but here we are, we're, we're going to check, check down the race, and yeah. Just the weekly go pod. over a couple different go things couple and see things. what's uh, it's a it's a bit of a weird time I'd say. Um, not to say it's quiet by any means, but um, usually every week we got some like uh, obvious topics, and mm-hmm. uh, this week, other than our staple topics, it feels um, almost premature to get into some stuff. I know offline we were talking about uh, getting into the trophy battles and stuff like that. Uh, I feel like we're still a little bit early because a lot can happen in the next five games. Uh, yeah. specifically with goalies and MVPs and stuff like that to uh, change the game um, with injuries and stuff coming back. So um, that being said, uh, I know that you wanted to kick things off talking about Ryan Miller. Yeah, I just wanted to give a shout out to Miller. He's had an amazing season. No, <laughs> career, I mean, wow. And a season, sure, on the on the Ducks, as good as it can be. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him play, so I couldn't comment. <laughs> no, <laughs> Me either, really, but he's retired. <laughs> he's announced that he's retiring and being the the mo- leading the American born goalies and wins. So I just wanted to give him a little shout out. Shout out. Sh- sh- <laughs> God damn shout it. Out. Get him to talk. Right now. <laughs> I know, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I mean, when you put that there, and I heard that today too as well, but Ryan Miller, and I was just like, God damn, like, um, it, it's weird because as a Leaf fan, uh, those many years ago, as now it seems, that he played for the Buffalo Sabres. And just game in and game out, he got between the pipes and he played ridiculous. And um, the amount of times watching him play uh, and how he played, then when he kind of went, I think he went what to Islanders and then the Ducks, I think it was. He's in the Canucks, um, something like too, that. Right? Ducks as well, I think. Yeah, for a year or two there I don't as well. Think he went so, to the Islanders, did he? I think he got traded from the Canucks Didn't... to the Islanders at the trade deadline, but I don't know if he actually ever played for them. I thought it went from Buffalo to St. Louis one year at the trade deadline and then he signed in vancouver and then they trade and now he's a duck i think that's how it went are we are we looking it up i'm looking it up right now so buffalo 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 yep you're correct uh st louis uh to vancouver yep and then vancouver to anaheim so no wow no look at that i, I called it thinking, perfect yeah I, I must be thinking about something else uh, or maybe i'm thinking back to like a, a trade that almost happened or something that's tickling my brain somehow or whatever we should, um yeah back to yeah I was just going to say, this new segment, I'm already coming up with it right in here on the fly. It's like the shout-out segment, because the next guy I wanted to talk about was Quentin Byfield, too, mm-hmm. and yeah. how he made his debut um, for the Kings, and I'm sure everyone that's a Kings fan out there is probably super excited to watch this guy play. I didn't even, I didn't know he debuted until after the game, which maybe I'm just not looking in the right places to see this kind of stuff coming out right now, but I feel like it should have been a little more hype, and I should have yeah. maybe heard it, but... I mean, because I listen to AM radio and podcasts basically all day, every day, I heard a little bit about it. But even okay. then, uh, to to defend what you're saying, like, I didn't hear a lot about it um, being kind of really in tune. So, uh, yeah, I don't Can think you, that's correct. Not, but then again, it's it's, it's a late game. Didn't, it wasn't the day. Yeah, it wasn't a debut like 1030 at night, too. Yeah, exactly. It was. So. And it was the Ducks and the Kings. So really, can you? Yeah. But you're only going to reach a certain crowd at that point. Yeah. Sounds sounds for real, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I, I'm excited for the guy. Like, um, I know I've talked about the Kings and their prospects and stuff. I know they're lacking some of it on the back end. Um, but if they could make a couple savvy mo- savvy moves in this offseason, maybe take advantage of one buyout in a certain particular situation, the Kings could be that team that uh, flips around again and isn't maybe a cup contender next year, but a playoff contender, I think, the, depending on what they do next yeah. year or the year after given they look good yeah and the division setup they have is really in their favor as well assuming some some things go back to normal uh, see i'm not a big believer in your boy cal peterson but if he is legit then they'll be really good in two or three years if he's not legit they might not be as good they might not reach that next year they have we'll a see. pretty good setup for to eventually transition into them it's got to, they have quick to make it a slow process and that's usually that can sometimes be the difference between a goalie making it and not making it sometimes whether that's they're true. forced make, into it or they can just like gradually go into it play good enough to take the job eventually yeah or run quick start. or a combination of the other person losing the job yeah some, exactly. sort, of, some sort of combination anyways but yeah um 
I'm excited to see what he does. I think he's going to be a guy that people are going to want to keep on their fantasy roster or sorry, fantasy radar for next mm-hmm. year. Um, maybe a late round pick. Um, but he's the type of guy where I don't want to say a Brady Kachuk because uh, Brady Kachuk plays as Brady Kachuk does. Um, but Byfield coming onto a team where maybe he's like the third line center or playing on the third line wing and he's not um, yet part of the primary cast he might be able to run around a little bit like Brady does or like Matthew does on occasion or even like Wilson occasionally does. Um, But once he becomes more of that core piece, um, I think he'll have to fight less and stuff, obviously, to avoid some injuries and whatnot to stay in the lineup, to be that power forward. But he's that mold of type of guy that has the hits, has the shots, and will probably should have the uh, production as well. So I think he has a big bright future excited to see how this king's team does look it's one of those ones that we will get to are we doing power rankings today yeah we are so we'll get to that yeah we'll Um, get to that and we don't know yeah their division and we don't know how that's going to look next year but with the covid era still upon us and we don't even really know if what's going to (laughs) happen outside we don't um but a lot of people are saying that there should be an asterisk right Yep. Cool. And I've been, I've been hurting here. You were asking me what this topic was a little bit about. And uh, I've been hearing just some talk just about like, does it count? Mm-hmm. And of course it counts. Like this will be the second time the awards and the cup has been given out. That will be of the same. You can asterisk, asterisk it if you want much like the like, lockout or shortened seasons or whatever, but it doesn't make it anything less of so, a cup winning. To be, like yeah. And to be honest, doesn't that asterisk kind of like make it ha- have that placeholder in the history books for like hundreds of years like this is going to be unique so they'll be it'll be written about for a hundred years it'll be talked about yeah uh, so individually if, if anything yeah. it, it's more of a historic historic achievement than just a regular cup season win yeah um, so i agree with that i think yeah I, the asterisk people that it might be there but if anything it's a good thing for it for yeah sure. oh yeah and the, there's going to be that talk all the way through and the one thing uh, i know that we were talking again offline just about the trophies and stuff uh there has been some suggestion uh that this year it would be more fair uh to hand out like four vesnas and whatever i don't know how i feel yet about that um it. but at the same time the idea of how can you tell me that one goalie in division a is any better than go- goalie in division c when they played entirely different um, capable uh, opponents. Like I know that you joke, uh, the Vesna definitely isn't coming from the North, but at the same time, there are better candidates from the North than some of the other divisions. So like, mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm, I'm more towards, I don't think you should split it up. I think it should still be one, but I could get the, I could understand why yeah. maybe there'd be like a, uh, maybe like, again, I've already said, maybe this is a time for new awards. Like, maybe this isn't the time for, like, you know, a full-time new award, but maybe this is the season that you give out, you know, you are the best defenseman of the North. You are the best defenseman of the Pacific or whatever the division titles are. Um, Maybe we do that this year, and then we'd have new trophy names next year, and we've changed the the page on that stuff. Can't they just sell the names of the trophies to sponsors, like the Pepsi trophy of the 20th first century? (laughs) They could, but I think that they're hesitant to sell those parts. Yeah, no like, I think no, they no, want to no, keep just... those in the family, so to speak. Like, I think that they want to I don't know. Can you that, really put uh, a price on a, a trophy of a sport like that? I don't think so, right? No. No. And what happens if that company goes under and you're, you know, are you going to keep that name as the trophy for your MVP? It's like, uh, the company is no longer a thing, but they've sold it, sold it now to Shell or something. And it's yeah. like, okay. But, yeah. <laughs> But uh, with the division realignments, the other thing as well is I know that we've talked about multiple times and I was I was certain that they had already announced and, and formalized that uh, the North was going to play the division with Colorado and Vegas in it. Like I, I started the season. Oh, yeah, you told yeah, you said it on here, yeah. that that was yeah. the case. Yeah. So I don't know. We've heard last pod, we talked about Leonard and stuff and how things that how the NHL has changed their stance on multiple things with the players. It could just simply be that they they ended up changing their stance on it. Yeah, could be. Um, or to be honest, when, at but, the beginning maybe they had to like go to Plan B here because Plan A was a specific idea or like 
they've had more time to debate. Yeah, I'm, I have no problem with. I think they would have thought that they're better by now. Like I think they thought that they'd be in a better situation. Yeah. But if the idea is to cut down the most uh, travel time and exposure, specifically between series, exactly. It's not a bad idea, but it's yeah, just weird it's, not knowing your opponent. It's okay to change your mind on something when new information comes to light. Now that we're like a few months in now, new information make a different decision it's okay mm. and it looks like they might be doing that right yeah right. yeah and what I, what i meant with the teams and i know i was saying to you is just like if it ends up being uh tampa boston uh or sorry dallas boston toronto and colorado then toronto will move over and play boston because they're closer geo uh geographically um but the problem with that um and part of why they're saying does it count is the winner of the northern division is going to be housed out of the states for sure. That, sound, for sure. that sounds basically all but certain, unless things drastically change in the next month, which I'm not very sure that that's even possible at this point, uh, to the extent of what would need to change in such a short period of time to make it yeah. possible. Um, they can't have home and homes, right? Like you can't travel in and out of the country within a week to play in and out twice, right? Like they just, the government's not letting it. So, it sucks because the winner of the North is probably going to be playing out of either Chicago or Buffalo, depending on what teams That's pretty terrible. make it. That's a terrible yeah. situation. So they don't even know what division they're going to be playing, nor do they know what town they're going to be playing out of. But some people are saying, oh, does it count? Well, for this team out of the North, whoever makes it out of the North, they're it could yeah. be the craziest situation, right? And, oh, actually, this just made me think of it. Um, I don't know if anyone's heard about this or not, but the Maple Leafs this year are doing a um, um, Amazon, I think it's an Amazon uh, Prime special uh, oh. with what it's like to be a Maple Leaf or be a hockey player like during this year. kind of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're doing like a behind the scenes with everything. Uh, they haven't mu released much details, but they obviously said after the season it'll be a multi-episode series. Um, but it will just be interesting to see um, because theoretically and hopefully and whatever, if this season is the season that the Leafs go far, and if this is the season where the Leafs get into the final four and they do play out of Chicago Convenient or out series, of yeah. Buffalo or whatever, this, this viewership, this uh, series to watch could be one of the – Best sports ones, craziest there. sports histories, right? Like, That's so crazy. yeah, I didn't it'll be interesting that. to see where that all goes. So I've watched like different at the Philadelphia Flyers version of that. So that was fun to watch during the preseason, how they're figuring it out and stuff like that. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But they have, um, they've had ones in the past that they call the Leaf Blueprint, where it's basically game by game. They do like in the change room and like the coaches' meetings and stuff like that. Um, but apparently, this one is going to be more from like kind of logistics and kind of stuff like that. Like what did they have to go through when they traveled? What did they have to buy for their teams? How did they have to protect their players and their families? Like when they needed to travel or do whatever, how did they do it? Like it's, I think it's going to be like, how, how did this season happen in a season where probably logically or maybe couldn't have, you know what I mean? Like they pulled it, pulled it off and we're not done yet. So, I mean, it still could come off the rails, but hopefully it doesn't. No, hopefully, yeah, for sure. All right, do you want to jump into some three-star action? Let's do it. Let's do it. And you're going to go up first this week because I think I've gone first. i gone first for the last couple of weeks. So Sounds good, man. Um, this one, I'm going to be honest, right off the top, I had a hard time. Very hard time overall. Yeah. Uh, I got maybe it's a got, little weird, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Was like Maybe it's just a balanced pair. Like, no one really stand, stood out over crazy. But, of course, I still picked three guys, and I'm going to go through them. So, let's do mm. it. So, for my third star, uh, second week in a row, actually, uh, that he hit the three stars, is Shea Theodore. So, first of all, Vegas is on a 10-game winning streak. Uh, last time we did it, they were on eight game winning streak so they only had two games so i was looking at him and he has the fourth highest shots on net over the past 31 days in the entire nhl so i thought that that's that really stood out to me I want to give especially him a, as a d as a d man yeah. yeah and his minutes aren't insanely high compared to some of those other defense that are out there he's out there on average probably about 22 minutes a game so thought that was pretty interesting and he's definitely been a big part of that power play which is a strong part of vegas and vegas on his tear so that's my shout out there 
my second star of the week was going to Sam Reinhardt. And I wanted to, I think this might be the first Buffalo Sabre to get there all season long. Um, I think so. <laughs> and honestly, I want to give them a little bit of a shout out because they've turned it around since they switched coaches at least a little bit. Like they at least mm. got some sort of hire, something to, sh- to go down fighting. They're not, they're not looking like that sad team they were in a well. lot of situations though i'd say they're right at the wrong time they're starting to win but it's different with buffalo like buffalo yeah. f- at first upvote needs to turn the ship around in terms of not being considered a losing team and by finishing up the season even if they've changed draft spots by five six seven draft spots if they win more than they lose down the stretch i think that that in the long run is going to be more worth it than anything oh, definitely. so agreed agreed and for sam he's stepped up he's finally getting to play that role that he, he's used to really he's, he's mm. always been a, a center down in in the juniors and stuff i figured um so yeah with eichel out he's gotten the opportunity and now he's finally he's he's one of the got top guys in shots too right now which i found yeah. interesting and this goes to my number one star my man hasn't haven't seen him all season long Sebastian Ajo, eight points in the past four games. But overall, Carolina, too, is now the top dog in the East, the Mutual East, whatever division. Not uh, the East, it's the mutual. Central. Is it? Central. I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> Central. But I'm, the, I'm so bad with the, the divisions this year. I'm so all yeah. over the place. Long story short, remember. they're top. I got over Florida. They're over Tampa. And Sebastian, he's he's a big part of that, uh, this young mm-hmm. This young star, I like this guy. I think he deserves the shout out as a big part of that team. Um, mm. And that's my three stars of the week. Good selections. <laughs> that's good, yeah. And it's funny that you say off the top that um, it was kind of strange week. And that's how I felt because, like, as I mentioned, you, you went first. So you had picked your three. Uh, so when I went and, like, what I usually do is I'll go to the fantasy page and sort by last seven days and all players just to see production. Yeah, uh, and then go from there. And when I sorted it for production for skaters, I found there was maybe eight ish bodies that were above the rest, but no one really within that eight stood out other than Aho. I think Aho yeah. was the only like clear cut out like stand guy that stood out. Um, and then when I went to the goalie page, yeah, there really was only one, and his stats aren't amazing but the peripherals kind of are okay mm-hmm. so it's kind of like well does a goalie deserve it can i not put a goalie in it <laughs> can so sorry really, not put a goalie is the real question right so I, it was kind of weird because i was just kind of like i felt like all of them were i don't want to call it a stretch but all of them you could go a bunch of different ways it's just how yeah. you felt or maybe if you watch some games or whatever so that being said i <laughs> did have to go with the goalie <laughs> And I, I can't exactly. believe I went with him. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe I went with him. Um, I've awesome. been chirping him for like a calendar year now. Um, but Tristan Jari of the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, he only has two losses in his last seven games. I think a lot of that has to do with his team and not his play, but I honestly <laughs> couldn't say either way because I'm not yeah, watching okay. the Penguins play Come these on. days. Give him some credit. I, I I am. I put him in my uh, yeah. three stars. Yeah, okay, that's fair. that's enough credit. <laughs> um, but he only has out of this two of the losses. One of them was in overtime or shootout. I can't remember, but uh, an extra time, uh, and one was a shutout. Um, so goals against save percentage weren't amazing. Um, but as we know, kind of anyone who's familiar-ish with Penguins, we know they don't have too many two one three two games. They have a lot of yeah. games where there's five six seven eight goals scored so uh one of those goalies where he plays good enough to get the wins um doesn't give up the, sh- the bad ones except for when he is and that's why he's shit when he is but that's besides the point. Oh, come on get out of here <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, but regardless he got he got the position of three third star of the week so congratulations to him uh second star of the week for me i had to go with uh depending how you want to call him even either alex or sasha depending yep uh, I still don't know why he hasn't picked one and why he still goes by both. Um, but Just that's besides the point. Uh, yeah. He's, I guess so. Um, but he's the, I think he should go with Sasha. That's, that's a cooler name. <laughs> uh, but he's the heartbeat, heartbeat of the Panthers. He really is. And like, uh, when I've watched some of their games, uh, when he's clicking, they're just, their mojo's on. Uh, when he's out of the lineup or when he's not playing great, they just kind of seem to not be in gear. 
Um, so he really, I find, is is the heartbeat of the Florida uh, Panthers. Uh, and on top of that, he's got five goals with one game winner uh, in the last week. Um, so nice, yeah. I thought he was deserving of it. I think two of them, uh, or one of them, uh, two of his other goals were uh, game tying goals as well. So three goals when it really matters uh, is pretty important. Yep. Um, and then for my first star, um, I picked Nathan McKinnon. Um, I just figured he's just kind of continuing on. Um, other than, well, not other than, but uh, these postponed games are happening. People are in and out of the lineup, some injuries, um, but he still keeps plugging away. Um, so he's got two two goals, six assists, eight points in his last uh, in the last week, uh, with four power play points and twenty shots on goal, uh, which would have put him in the top four or five uh, for shots on goal, uh, if not higher to one. I don't know exactly, but I'm pretty sure he was towards maybe three or four. I think he was for shots on goal. So. Pretty, pretty good week for him, and uh, it's almost just being uh, expected now from him. But yeah. uh, he, cool. the one guy I thought of could possible uh, honorable mention just from how nasty of a goal he scored the other day was uh, Austin Matthews. <laughs> I don't know if he caught that goal. He didn't. He uh, checked it out. He knocked it out of the air and knocked it down onto the ground and then whipped it in the net, oh, like okay. almost in like one kind of s- smooth motion. It was kind of like golfed it. Uh, after he knocked it out yeah. of the air, yeah. Then he golfed it. It was kind of like, at that speed, I bet you 90% of the league couldn't do it. Yeah. He did no, within the sure. game. So check it out. It was, I mean, it's not like the nicest goal, but like to see the skill that's required to pull that goal off, it was off the charts. So even just for that, I would have given him an honorable mention. <laughs> Sounds good. That's the three stars. That's the three stars. <laughs> All right. My next thing I wanted to talk about was some of these playoff races. Yeah. Uh, they're getting, we're getting down to the wire. Five games left for some teams. Six, seven, pretty much in that, that area. I would say it's safe to say at this point that the West, we know the four teams. They might j- j- jumble for position, but I don't think St. Louis can blow it now at this rate. Yeah. Um, with Arizona. Um, the other three technically, I think still have that small mathematical percent chance of happening. Like sure. The West has that, but it's probably 1%. Whereas with these, maybe 10% for some, uh, mm-hmm. maybe 50, 50, or even a good 70, 50, like who knows? Yeah. I mean, in my mind, I think there's a lot more of them that are to me over or, or leaning really mm-hmm. in favor of one team. Um, but I think, I mean, obviously Nashville, Dallas, that's probably the closest one. Yeah. The next closest would probably be what Rangers Islanders, Boston. I would think so. Like, based on the heat of the Rangers compared to the, the other one. Pun mm-hmm. intended. And then third would probably be Calgary and Montreal. And mm-hmm. then last would probably be, uh, St. Louis and Arizona. Yeah. But, yeah. So I think with, with, with Montreal and Calgary, Calgary needs to basically win the rest of their games and maybe lose one. Um, they have, they do have the advantage in schedule I was looking at, um, whereas Montreal has like Winnipeg, Edmonton, Leafs down the stretch. Uh, mm-hmm. The Flames do have four against the Canucks. Uh, who knows if they can take all four? It's a stretch, but it could happen. Yeah. Um, and then with the Rangers, one uh, Rangers play Boston and Islanders. A combined, they play them both twice. So I think they have to win all four uh, for them yeah. to get in. That seems in to regulation be. too. They might be able to get away with one not in regulation one, but yeah, but more they, than not. <laughs> yeah, they need they need <laughs> those. bleed points. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so that's basically if they lose tonight, they're probably mathematically as good as dead. And then that last one you talked about with Nashville having a slight lead, but they have the games advantage, or Dallas has the games advantage with, I think, two games and probably a little bit scheduled balance, but they play each other only once. So I think, like you said, that's the most likely one that'd be an upset. I would, might even consider Dallas to be a favorite to take that spot i at this point in my brain believe they are because like i said to you earlier that like the if you look at arcs obviously there's there's gonna be an up and a down and i feel like nashville they may not have apexed yet but i feel like they're kind of in cruise control at the top where dallas we don't know where it's gonna start um but it's it's going up yeah it could flatline but i feel like 
No, I'm with you on that. I totally agree. I think we're on the same page. Yeah, they said Sagan's still another week out. So that's... Yeah. But it's gonna be they fine, got Sagan, like, they got Bishop, they cool. got a, uh, one of their defensemen. Yeah. Some of these are... They're going to be playing games. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. All right. Do you want to look at the power rankings uh, but overall? But I guess... Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do it. All right. Pull this up. New style here. Boom. All right. Boom. Boom. Let's see if we can zoom in. All right, so you did the pleasure of creating this awesome spreadsheet of basically we totally agree now, I think, right, on these these uh, rankings. We kind of yep. put all the teams across the league into tiers um, from Stanley Cup favorites all the way down to who's rebuilding, retooling. I think that's a good word for the basement. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, sometimes they're not rebuilding. They just had a bad year, bad injuries, and they're just kind of got to wait it out. Yeah, all the time. Exactly. And what are you, how, I was interested. Middling teams. Cause, so this could be like both teams that are like on their way up and on their way down. They're like kind of ships passing in the night, maybe for some. Yeah, of them. and then also kind of like teams that maybe expected they'd be in the playoffs and had traded some assets uh, last year or in the summer, expecting they'd be there. Um, slash maybe they don't have a great prospect cupboard or picks that, you know, they it's bet it's yeah. in their better interest to compete than it is to rebuild yet uh, until they kind of like San Jose, for example, uh, in a year from now, once they are back to all their normal picks, they'll probably fall into a different category. But because they don't have very many picks, their prospect cupboards kind of bare um, yeah. and they're not really competing. They're middling. They're just totally they're just a placeholder basically so totally all right and then but yeah let's start to the top i guess let's go to the top start from the top and go down all right go ahead you can um so i mean i don't know if i put these in any particular order um i kind of i was gonna do it alphabetically per tier but then i was like eh, whatever and then i kind of a little bit put it in order of um favorites yeah. Um, or, or who would be more or least likely to fall to the next tier or raise to the next, like up a tier if you're one of the middle, smaller, or lower tiers. Mm -hmm. um, but I put Vegas just because I put them first because I obviously they're on the same tier, but um, I just felt like they deserved a little respect. They're first in the league. Um, they got screwed out of the playoffs by San Jose. Was that last year or the year before? Years, two uh, years, yeah. two years ago. Years and who did they now. lose to last year? Uh, they lost to Dallas in the conference finals. Dallas, yeah. right. Wasn't there some sort of sketchy play with that, too? I don't think so. They kind Something of just got like outplayed. Okay. Um, but basically, like, you know, they, they, they are not a team who plays – I know there's not a huge track record, but they're not a team who uh, may, plays well in the regular season, gets to the playoffs, and falls on their face. Uh, they've shown that they can perform in the playoffs. Uh, so I kind of just put them up there. Um, they're the favorite, and they've shown that in the past. So I thought they deserved that respect. Yep. Um, I actually went with Washington next just because they won the Cup recently. Um, they're built for the playoffs. Um, I know I've been heavy on them all year. I really like how they're built. They've got the right veteran leadership. They've got the right balance of everything. I think Wilson's going to start coming alive again. Um, I think that they're probably the team to watch in that division even though it's going to be hella hard to get out of. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then Tampa, Carolina, uh, honestly, go either way. I just gave respect to Tampa. Um, I think Carolina should be the next one, but Tampa won the cup recently, so I thought that deserved a little bit of respect. Uh, and then Colorado, um, I thought, is the worst team of that tier, even though they're up there. So, so I kind of had them there. Yeah. You don't think uh, if you had to drop a team, if you had to swap a team from the green to the blue, what would be your your team out and team in? Uh, it would definitely be the Islanders in. Uh, I think they're just. I honestly yeah. have a lot of faith in them right now, and yeah. I would probably drop the at this point Capitals out of the yeah. top out of the top blue. Yeah. yeah, I just I don't know. Uh, I am worried about their playoff uh, with the goalies. Uh, yeah, I, that's fair. And so I give That's the fair. edge to Island. I think the Islanders are just as deep. They don't have like Ovechkin, obviously, or they're probably not as good at the top. But overall deepness, they're probably just as deep. And I, I like their mm -hmm. goalies better. Mm -hmm. And they're built. They're built to playoff teams, so they just got to get in. Their seed, their seeding to them is less important. Yeah. 
So. They're the, they're gonna they know they're gonna be in tough no matter who they play, right? Yeah. So, pretty much goes. Yeah, and then uh, and then next uh, tier is all the teams that uh, obviously, if everything goes right, if they're everything kind of clicks hell, yeah. and whatever, they 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 could be bumped up into the top. Like, yep. If Florida had Ekblad, I would put I would have put Florida in the top. Absolutely, easy. But because they're missing Ekblad and we don't know if he could potentially return, I don't think with his leg injury, I don't think he's coming back this year. Um, so I, I just, I know they're doing it in the regular season, but like, I don't know, beat Tampa yeah. and we'll see. No, I'm with you. All these teams kind of are like, have the one weakness that can really expose them to keeping them right at the elite level. But like you said, if, if everything's going their way on any given night, they definitely have a lot of times where they play at the blue level level of caliber. Uh, mm-hmm. I think all these teams like Edmonton, for instance, just they have McDavid and Drysaddle, mm-hmm. and any given day those two guys can just carry you to a win. And in the playoffs, that can bring you blue blue level. Mm-hmm. And I know that uh, before the show, I had Edmonton uh, in orange, and you're like, "No, nah, I think they should be green." I was like, "Yeah, that's fair." So I moved them up, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, the fact that uh, they've uh, raised above Winnipeg now. Uh, yeah. Slash Winnipeg has fallen below them, so. Um, if it it's not Toronto team. that yeah. comes out of that division, it's probably going to be them. So um, that's why they're both in that tier. But I still think Winnipeg has the higher um, ceiling for playoff output yeah. uh, based on who's performing currently. Who knows, so. though? Like, if they're playing each other, uh, if they don't have – Winnipeg's their glaring wit, uh, like weakness is their defense. So mm-hmm. against McDavid, <laughs> you probably yeah. need defense. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But you also have Hellebuck. Um, I mean, yeah. Smith's been playing out of his mind. Yeah. Uh, I've been waiting for that to kind of <laughs> that balloon to pop. But hey, yeah. maybe it's just his year this year before he retires. Maybe that's just how it's going to go for him. Yeah. Um, who, who knows, right? Um, but Dallas, even though Dallas isn't a guaranteed playoff team, I have them in there because they're much like the Islanders, where um, once they get in, seating doesn't matter. They're a playoff. They're uh, built to play in the playoffs, and they're built to try and give you a hard time and not let you score and punch in the face while they're doing it. So I think that they could be a scary team if uh, their injuries line up um, coming back healthy at the same time or at the right time. Um, but I'm a little bit worried about that trio uh, of the goalies just to the Kudobin and uh, Jake Ottinger uh, were in a little bit of a, a, a groove, right? So to have Bishop come back and yeah. if he doesn't play well to start, then now they've lost their groove and you might be in a bit of a weird, tough situation. Um, but besides that, I think that they're, better than any of those teams in the orange yeah agreed but my question for you is uh what what at what level do we have to give uh minnesota respect that's right right exactly where i was going next they're like the like the very borderline team i think if it wasn't for who they have to get by they'd be a possible contender i think and i think this probably is not the way to be but we pretty much assume they're going to be eliminated the first round Mm -hmm. um which every year there's the team that surprises like that, but so very well could be them. But at, at this rate, they're by far, if they, when they're by far, they're like kind of guaranteed a playoff spot, but they're also like the least likely to go past the first round in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was thinking about it more today and I realized I was like, they really do get to feed off those other crappy teams. So regardless of the other teams that they're playing in the same level with, they're taking care of business against the bad teams, which by default puts them in the same bubble, right? Yeah. So, like, we don't really know if that, like, they've I had, haven't watched them play. Yeah, each other they've had today, a lot of good games against Vegas, they? against Colorado. Okay. Like, they've been good, but I just don't know if they can keep up with those two teams yeah. for a seven game series. They'd um, have to play a really good series. Yeah, like, like a, I guess they've been series. playing three game series against them all year, but. Mm. I don't know if they're they're winning them too often against them. But I, if I recall correctly, uh, the couple times Minnesota's beat those teams, they've beat them like two one yeah, one nothing Talbot two Stanley nothing. On his exactly, yeah. So yeah. like if that's not happening, they're losing them kind of four three five four, which exactly kind of tends to make me think that that's what we're gonna see in the playoffs. Like they'll they'll put up a good fight, but they'll just kind of come up short yeah. too many times exactly before they're out. But uh, Nashville, Rangers, St. Louis, Montreal, do you think any of those teams could move up at all? I think if the season's longer, we'd see the Rangers moving up. 
um but they're just at a runway so they, they kind of yeah. are pretenders at this rate if they're i think a, a lot of their team is relying like they they, they struggled when Shesterkin was out um the, but their backup stepped up they got wins they stayed in the hunt but they struggled with him out and even he wasn't great to lead things off because him and georgiev gorgiev uh were trading starts back and forth constantly mm-hmm. at the beginning of the season so i don't know uh, next year uh, i would look for them to be much higher yeah what about st louis uh i don't see it right now i, I think they're yeah. properly rated yeah. yeah i think they're that team that uh they have all the right components they would just have to get they have to on do a it. huge heater at yeah. the right time and there's just so many other good teams that i don't think that they'll be allowed like i think other teams will just or better will just be like that's great but this is what we're gonna do yep. <laughs> yep um but middling teams um what's your feedback what's your thought what's your uh anything come up when you looked at those teams that you wanted to talk about uh not, nothing crazy pops up i guess uh a lot of them are just like not not expected them to be as good as they are or they kind of been a lot worse than expected it, it feels like um actually i don't know i don't there's nothing really that stands out (laughs) Mm. they're just kind of like you're not bad you're not great you're just here yeah it's just like like, i don't know like they're gonna miss it's gonna be a disappointment they're not in a great spot going forward that we're excited of what kind of assets they're building and where the future is going uh vancouver I don't know. I'm interested how they're going to be playing next year or like what's mm-hmm. going to be going on with them. Me too. That'll be an interesting storyline to watch all summer. All yeah. Um, I think their coach comes up, his contract expires this year. So I don't know what they're going to do in that situation. I'm assuming they'll resign mm-hmm. him maybe for a year or two, maybe a two year deal. We'll see. I think a lot of the coaches, uh, much like the players right now are holding out to see who Seattle gets uh, cause from what I'm hearing is basically Seattle's like, we want our guy and we're going to pay out the ass for it. Can he, um, can they steal a coach from someone? No, he has to be unsigned. So I, I think it's Rob Brindamore. I think they want Brindamore out of uh, Carolina. Um, I think that would be terrible for Carolina if that were to happen. Well, um, I think they're up? trying to, yep. He's an upcoming free agent. Uh, and I think they're going to offer him tons of money. You got to remember Ron Francis is in Seattle. Yeah, uh, that's the guy who was in Carolina before, right? And yeah. gave him his first opportunity. So um, there's already kind of that pre-built connection. That makes and sense. And if they walk in and say, like, we'll make you the third, fourth, fifth, first, whatever highest paid coach, uh, whatever he's looking for. Yeah. He could be the guy that lands in Seattle, right? But also if, if there's other coaches who are like, hey, I might not be option A or B, but I might be option C. And I know that Seattle will give me $4 million to coach. Why well, re up for two and a half where I currently am when I know that that offer is probably going to be there, and then I can also even turn around and be like, "Well, if I'm being offered four million here, give me four million to stay." Yeah, but there's only so many seats. You got you can't be the last one standing, right? Yep, yep. But uh, yeah, be good. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's any teams for you that uh, are restricted in terms of moving down. Like, do you think I was too harsh on any of them? Um, that should just be kind of given a free pass, so to speak, for this season and be put in the rebuild and retooling category? Uh, no, because I don't think anyone's really on that list has done anything to show they're rebuilding. So, yeah, I think it's right. Yeah. yeah. Out of the uh, rebuilding and retooling teams, what uh, which two teams are you most excited about um, advancing up these tiers quickest? Uh, I think... Oh, the quickest, like in the next year or two, next year even. Yeah. Next year, I probably would have to say Buffalo. I'm gonna say it. I'm giving them hope. Uh, it's gonna be Buffalo and probably. Oh my god, I want to say Ottawa too. Yeah. And the Kings, but Ottawa. Those probably. are my three. Yeah. 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 I would say of the of the list, the one I'm least excited about, probably. Man, they all have something. You know what's funny? I could really much see next season this bottom tier and the tier above it just flip. Yeah. Everyone go up. Or even in the pretenders. Yeah. Maybe in Nashville or Montreal. Yeah, I could really see yeah. that. Like any of these teams, they all have something that's kind of interesting to to watch how it's going to develop. Anaheim's probably the one I'm least 
interested in and excited about. Uh, Columbus, yeah. uh, I don't even know where to start with them. Uh, yeah. Actually, they're they're just a complete mess. They're probably they're probably the very bottom in my books. Probably, yeah. At least yeah. with New Jersey, you got Jack Hughes to be really excited about. Um, that, At her, well, sure, he just had some injury problems. So, yeah. I don't know. I think there's more ex- excitement there than the other two. The tough thing that I find too that um, I know that I'm very much the guy that likes to project and forecast and like look at uh, you know next year's fantasy guys and stuff. I'm having a really hard time personally, um, just because all the talk about uh, that we don't truly know the way the divisions are going to look again next year. Um, we could have another Northern Division 2.0. We could have a Northern Division for just the first half of the season, and then like do a hybrid option. Like we don't know. Uh, is it going to be traditional 82 games, like whatever, right? Yeah. Um, who are the opponents going to be? Are you going to play the same teams as this year? And now are you going to build to play those other teams once you know? Or are you going to then again build to play 80, uh, not 82 teams, but play the other 30 teams, right? Right. Like, it's hard to forecast for me to see, you know, we, for example, the King, for, well, for example, Ottawa might be better. Um, Ottawa looks like they're going to be pretty good. Um, in the Northern Division, can they advance above some of the other teams? Maybe not as quick. If you put them back in that other division, maybe they can. Yeah. It's it's hard to say, right? So that's a tough. I definitely it's weird. But, for, for I just feel like sometimes that all, I love all these teams. Like there's always like all of them in my mind. I can see that path to them being really good. And it's just yeah. not all of them, but you know what I mean. You know what we should do in the offseason? There can only be so many rankings yeah. for teams we like and don't like. Like <laughs> rank them from one through thirty, just to see who. Just straight emotion. Who, then we can, yeah, illustrate our biases to see who we hate. Like I hate the Islanders. I, I they serve no purpose to me. Like they're just a team. So yeah. that's why, like, I never cheer for them. I never think they're gonna do well. They're just Team X. They're wow, not even. We just Islanders lost a me. lot. We're we're not we're out of touch with millions of people. You realize because of this. <laughs> Millions of people. Are you insinuating that the Islanders have millions of fans? Ah, uh, for for me on my Twitter, the Islanders are one of the most vocal fans. It's insane. Are they? Yeah. And for them, I don't. I, get- I, I can't get it on Twitter for some reason. I keep getting locked out of it, and I'm just sick of trying to recover my freaking thing. So I just don't go on Twitter anymore. I so think I, I think one guy that I I follow is like an Islanders fan. So like he, like he tweets all the time too. So like throws stuff at me okay so i don't think i'm sure there's these kind of people for every team out there <laughs> yeah just gotta find it that's why i feel like you gotta share the I'll, love we love the islanders on the coast to coast podcast ever since we started the coast to coast podcast like i had a lot of blind spots for teams where i was just like don't care about you you could be the best team in the league and i still could care less about you um i know i kind of just said that but I, I feel like that as i go on year by year there's less of that and it yeah. more becomes I like these teams way more than those other teams and I don't dislike as many teams anymore. It's just I like certain teams more and it changes yeah. year to year and it's it sounds like uh, a bit of a, a bandwagon but at the same time like I'm I'm leaf to the core yeah. um, but I just like good hockey. I could That's care less if it's Minnesota, want... Ottawa yeah, exactly. or I could care less if it's Nashville and Buffalo. You want to see things good hockey you've game, never seen before like players doing <laughs> things yeah, they've never done like they're getting there exactly i'm excited yep me too what well, anything else you want to touch on the uh, power rankings before uh-huh. i do a little bit on the leafs yeah let's go to the leafs corner with your man tory <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i've been uh, i've been holding off a couple weeks just because i feel like they were reaching a very pivotal point of the season and i feel like they were teetering um on you know are are we looking at another 18 wheeler is this going to be another epic collapse or is this just a bit of turbulence and we're going to get through it and show that we're not like those old teams that we unfortunately got to got to watch during the shitty times (laughs) but uh i i think that uh i think that they've kind of navigated those tough seas a little bit i think they're kind of coming out the other side uh they've clinched the playoffs as of last night they're tonight they're not dressing felino and they're starting riddich uh in net so they're already giving some guys uh, some nights off and whatnot. Um, it's going to be a little bit weird because there's some guys coming back from injury and stuff, and the roster's not going to quite fit together. Uh, that's the number one thing that I'm hearing right now uh, is, like, 
there's too many forwards to dress on like it, it, the max you can dress any per night uh, or any forwards per night. Uh, there's one extra body who you want in. So it's like, at w- what guy do you sit? And that's the debate that's going on right now. I don't think that debate even matters. It's a because good debate, man. Like, yeah, it's a great it's debate. It's a great problem to have because co- come playoff mm-hmm. time, one person is going to get hurt. It's unfortunate, but it's six gonna people are going to get hurt. I know, but like, and yeah, like with with Wayne Simmons for example, everybody's like, oh, would it be best if he's not in the lineup? Well, he didn't get a, a hometown discount to be sat in the first game of the playoffs, and if we sit him in the first game of the playoffs, you know he's gone next year. He's not coming back. You know he's in the lineup, and yes, that might be at the expense of Alex Galchenyuk, but we know that Simmons is there for a presence, and he's there if he needs to drop the gloves. If he drops the gloves and punches a visor and breaks a knuckle, well, there's your hole in the lineup for the rest of the, the uh, <laughs> series. Uh, playoff. Serious, thank you. Yeah, yeah, so it's like the guys are going to get in. It's going to work itself out if you have – three or four bodies that are not playing that should be in. That's a great problem. That means when you have three or four injuries, you're not reaching down to the crappy players that are going to start hurting you. So I think people need to just chill out on that uh, and stop worrying about all these little problems. I think we need a soundbite. Leafs fans, you just need to chill out a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) Like do something like just chill out, have an edible. I don't know. Like just, (laughs) no, no, we don't, we don't, we don't. Uh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> what's the word who knows yeah well we don't we don't condone that yeah we don't condone that here <laughs> this is a family friendly <laughs> <laughs> do whatever you need to do to calm the hell down and yeah. just Go do some lunges. be excited because this is the best team yeah do whatever you need to do to get that nervous energy out because um this is the best team no matter what happens this is the best team that we've ever seen uh, in our lifetimes as Leaf fans uh, it, 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 as being a Leaf fan, we know it's probably not going to work out. Uh, so let's expect that. Let's expect <laughs> it's not going to work out. And if we get, I, I'm not, I'm not being stupid, but at the same time, like let's let's expect what's going to happen is that we'll let's get expect. into the final four right. and then we won't go any further, because that's probably what's going to happen. So if we expect that and we go further than that, then we're going to be ready to be on a fun ride, and we can drop all of our emotions at the at the four the final four and anything else on top of that's gravy. If it's we expect happening. to win the Stanley Cup we're all going to be disappointed. So I think people just need to kind of just have realistic expectations that we also might not get out of the final or get into the final four. Like if we, That's I don't even I, want to talk about this, but if we lose in the first round, there's going to be. I'm going to be the voice of reason, man. Go into this playoffs with zero expectations other than enjoyment. That should be your expectation. Watching the story unfold. No. Who cares? No. No, you're not a Leaf fan. The expectation I'm at not. minimal is to win a series. If they, if they, if the only way if they don't win a series that it's not an epic failure is if their goalies collapse. Uh, let's say like Morgan Riley gets hurt, uh, Matthews wrist breaks and he can't play anymore, and it's just kind of like we, like we didn't get our chance. Like it just got taken away from us. That's the only acceptable way to not get out of the first round. Other than that, like an epic streak of bad luck the Leafs have to win the series they have to win two to get Leafs fans trust back and if they don't there's going to be major issues and that's why I think it's unfair if they expect I think it's fair to expect that but I think it's like unfair to expect any further than that I guess is my main yeah. point okay. um, but we'll I think expectations should absolutely be one one round absolutely Absol- should be oh, one yeah. round okay um, fine. fine like after giving up that stuff like that, one round, absolutely two rounds should be like this team is built to get out of this 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 northern division. It it's it has to. It has to. There's it has to. I that's the only thing. But um <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I I'm love a little bit passion. worried. I'm a little worried with their goalies just because again, and the same thing I said with Dallas. Once you have a trio of guys who have got their fair share in there and now all of a sudden they're not getting every other night every other night or whatever. Um they don't play their best hockey usually. So I'm a little bit worried about that. And that's kind of the, um, the back door, the trick uh, to beat the Leafs, I think is, is if their Leafs, if their goalies kind of falter for them. Um, it feels like the power could play. it not I be the nineties all things. over again, growing up when it's always seemed to be the goalies couldn't get it done for them. They, Oh, they finally brought in Kuja. I just never, but we'll see. Yep. It's going to be fun, man. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to be on the it ride. Will be. With and you. like, 
Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm excited for it at this point. I don't care what happens between now and game one of the playoffs. Um, none of that really matters other than if they can get their power play together. Um, but just by watching them, their structures are changing again, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, it means that they've been working on stuff and now they're going into the playoffs or just before the playoffs changing their structures, which will give teams a new look, right? And it'll get them start second guessing themselves whether are they going to go with their original playbook that we finally figured out how to stop or are they going to go with this new playbook that we have to try and figure out? And if we go for this new playbook and we open up these holes that they were manipulating before, like, are we losing this chess game? So, yeah, no, it's good that there's special teams stuff going will be though. the difference. Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I can't wait. It'll be fun. Final four. They've got to make the final four. All right. I'll give it to you. They can be the final four, but hopefully. And then, like I said, the NHL could change the divisions and it probably means that they'll have to go. Uh, it's more likely than not based on the teams and the geography that the Leafs will actually have to face Boston or Tampa before they get to the cup final, as opposed to going to the season thinking that they might have to play Vegas or Colorado before they could potentially. Boston. I'd love to see that. I would love it. It'd be awesome. I, if the Leafs got past the two rounds and then placed played Boston, I want it. Give it to me. (laughs) To play them in the first round of the playoffs this year, I would be shaking in my boots. <laughs> Honestly. But we'll see. All right. Anything else? Oh, I think that they'll only get to the final four, though. I don't think they'll okay. go further. We got it. <laughs> I just got to make it clear. All right. It's there. <laughs> it's been, it, yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go watch them play. Hopefully, hopefully they're winning right now, but I don't know. Sounds good. I'm going to go watch some b-ball. Sounds good. Later. See ya.